I made a video reading your Pokemon headcanons, and you guys seem to enjoy that video, so I'm back here again reading your personal headcanons once more. And this time around, I got a ton more headcanons to choose from as you all left a ton of comments, and I had to read them all. Every single last one. So, hint hint, if you want your headcanon feature in an impossible future video, I suggest you start typing. For those in the back who don't know what a headcanon is, let me explain. A headcanon is a piece of fan canon that someone chooses to believe in, even if it's not something that the community as a whole believes. It stays tucked away in the creator mind as their own personal headcanon. Anyways, let's dive into some more headcanons. Lamiosaurus says, I have a headcanon that Cynthia runs a website where she rates different ice cream flavors, but it's anonymous to keep her image as champion intact. This is a really sweet headcanon. I like that it juxtaposes Cynthia's serious demeanor and honestly, I can kind of see it. Cynthia would be the type of person to have a secret love for ice cream. I wonder what kind of ice cream flavor would be your favorite though. There's so many to choose from. You can't pick just one. Maybe the Castilia cone is your favorite and that's the real reason she was in Unova. Dubba Cheese Booga says, <laughs> Pikachu doesn't want to evolve into Raichu because in Journeys, we see that evolving is what caused him to leave the Kangaskhan he was raised by as a Pichu behind. He didn't want to lose Ash too. This one is honestly pretty sad when you take the time to think about it. The first episode of Pokemon Journeys gives us a backstory of Fur Ash's Pikachu, something that we surprisingly have never seen up until now. In the episode, Pikachu is still a Pichu being taken care of a Kangaskhan. Then at the end of the episode, he evolves. Now being able to take care of himself, he leaves Kangaskhan. So I suppose that's why Pikachu denied taking the Thunder Stone in the Indigo League. Poor little guy. Ash almost left him anyway, but that's not relevant. Shad Amy fan says, I headcanon that N is a hardcore vegan. Seeing how N wants to create a separate world for humans and Pokemon, I think it's pretty reasonable to say that he'd be a vegan. He'd be the type of vegan to announce that he's a vegan every chance he gets. Just wait till he finds out about grass type Pokemon. He's gonna have an existential crisis. Vintage Stealth says, Deoxys is the battle-able version of Pokerus. Its dex entry says that it's a mutated virus and Pokerus is a virus. In my last video, I mentioned that a Pokemon based off of Pokerus would be really cool and I think Deoxys could fit this role, but I still want a tiny little virus Pokemon. But seeing as how the pandemic happened, it's not likely we'll be making any references to viruses anytime soon. Mr. Gamer says, my personal headcanon is, the reason why Leon became champion was because he always gets lost in the wild area and thus seems to endlessly fight every wild encounter he came across until he was rescued. This is such a regular occurrence that his Pokemon became strong enough for him to become champion. This one's great because that's pretty much what ends up happening in the games too. I think we've all been lost at one point or another and forgot to buy any repels, so we had to go on a murder spree and come out feeling like a monster. And seeing as how Leon gets lost just about as often as Roro is Oro, it's pretty fair to assume that this happens to him a lot. Uh, Zeon? Shown? Kuriyama says, My headcanon is that Ash is the narrator of the anime and is unreliable, and has grown fond of tall tales in his adult years. It explains Pikachu beating rock types and such. This one's bittersweet, but I really like it. It really does explain a lot of the random bullshit that happens in the anime. He's sort of like your uncle who claims he caught a 70-foot Magikarp. I reckon that Dewey Doo Waddle here can outrun a cheetah if he so wanted to, boy. Yeah, right. Oh, shit! I would honestly be so sad if that's how the anime ended, though. But fortunately, or unfortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, Ash isn't being being aged up. He's just gone now. Grace Bowden says, I don't know if there's anything contradictory to my headcanon, but I like to think that the reason we don't see Mega Evolution is because it was discovered that Mega Evolution causes Pokemon a lot of pain, so most regions have banned it from being used. Aside from there being parallel timelines, one where Mega Evolution exists and one where it doesn't, I don't think too many people in the Pokemon world would willingly put their Pokemon in pain, especially ones that they have a very strong bond with. So it kind of makes me think, what sick fuck had the great idea to make the transformation that requires a strong bond to activate inflict extreme pain? Let's go! It's all up to you, Ampharos! Ah! 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 This one's a long one, so I'll just go over the few of them that I like. Gizmo do Emocorn says, One of my favorite headcanons kind of spiraling into a bunch of smaller headcanons, and it's all Pokemon Master's fault. The main headcanon is that Grimly got bored on Pasio, so he made an underground poker ring with some of the other strong trainers like Nanu and the triplets. Eventually, more trainers stop by, and no one has the nerve to tell Lear about it. It. This main headcanon spun off smaller headcanons, such as Emmett got banned from playing poker because he used to eat the poker chips. Crasher Wake has an action figure collection and asks strong trainers like Blue if they can hook him up with some rare ones of them. Nani refuses to do anything about the illegal activity on Pasio despite being a cop because it's not in his jurisdiction and he likes the chaos. I don't know how this became a thing, it just did and I live for it. I really like the idea of an underground poker ring existing in Pasio. That sounds like such a fun idea. Not that I would like partake in it or anything. <laughs> That'd be silly. They're on to us. 
ridiculous. Emmett eating poker chips is just really funny to me. I can totally see him munching on some and then getting kicked out. Rasher Wake owning action figures seems really fitting, and to be fair, I don't think Nanu would do anything about any illegal activity. He just seems like he's at his wit's end. Gluttonous Goddess adds on to this by saying, I could see nobody batting an eye at the son of the mafia joining the poker ring, both a source of fun and money. And even if the geezers are tired, they've seen the chaos that his dad can cause. If any alternate world Giovanni finds out that Silver was banned, he'd probably throw a fit, assuming either Giovanni or Silver didn't just rat them out. Yeah, yeah, I have ties to a crime lord, but I also have intel on an illegal poker ring. I can totally see Silver ratting them out just out of pure spite. I feel like they'd all be a little intimidated by Silver though, kind of just sitting far away from him on purpose in order not to piss him off. Destiny Willowleaf replies to this saying, Pokemon Masters is honestly really fun headcanon grounds for interactions and stuff, so I can't blame you. One of my weirder master-based ones, dodge a bullet there, is some trainers look to racing around Pasio on their Pokemon, mostly legendary ones. Zinni and Silver started it between Rayquaza and Ho-Oh, and the racers' rosters just expanded over time. Some folks join in on the ground, Chris and Suicune, Blaine and Rapidash, Scotty slash Betty and Cobalion, Gladian and Silvalli, Marley and Arcanine, etc. But it's still mostly a sky race. It's kind of terrifying to watch. This one sounds incredibly fun and it kind of gives me Pokemon movie vibes. More specifically, Pokemon Heroes when Ash was wave riding using a Totodile, which first off, how the fuck is that even possible? He's so small! Okay, whatever. It doesn't matter. It still looks really cool, so I won't question it. Side tangent though, the older Pokemon movies were so cool. Maybe it's just the nostalgia talking, but whenever the movie starts off with Ash and friends playing around in the intro plays, it just hits every time. Lily Ocean says, I have a lot of head cannons, but I'll try to keep it to five. Number one, the trains on the battle subway are run by the clink line. They use magnetism to move the trains, which is why the battle background is cave-like to indicate a magnetic field. Number two, Diglett Cave is actually a giant onyx tunnel made long ago, but since Diglett and Doug Trio live there, now people think they dug it out. Number three, the Kalos region is a part of a bigger unexplored continent, with Kilod City being a place for southeastern explorers to come back to, Dendamel Town being the northeastern town for explorers. Number five, the Porygon phone in Pokemon Masters is made by Silphco, while the road Tom phone was introduced through Devoncorp, basically Pokemon's version of Apple versus Android. I feel like the one about the subway being magnetically propelled by the clink line is such a cool concept. I really like when Pokemon have other uses outside of battle and just sort of live alongside people, helping in whatever way they can. The Diglett cave one I can totally see happening, sort of like folklore. There's no way a bunch of Diglets made that cave, because if they did, that's terrifying. Kalos being a part of a bigger region would add a lot of depth to it. I always wonder what went beyond the maps we see in Pokemon. I love the last one though. So Co versus Devon Corp is such a funny concept to me. People in our world get really territorial and defensive about what phone they use. So now that there's a Rotom and Porygon phone, I can see people in the Pokemon world fighting over that as well. Personally, I'm on Team Rotom phone. Turns out I chose the wrong phone! Bolo says, My headcanon is that the games are made in-universe based off of Ash's adventures, and he's a celebrity for his travels in all the regions. In other words, the games we play exist in the anime and they're based off of Ash's life. This would be Ash's biggest flex. Imagine being so famous and influential that you have a whole video game franchise dedicated to your adventures around the world. Anyways, I'm gonna go play Animals featuring the hit character Michael B. Jordan. What a guy. Maru is here says, I still hear people referring to Arceus with the Arceus pronunciation, and to that I tell them this. In Legends Arceus, you get the Arc phone. If you follow the same pronunciation as Arceus, you get the Arce phone. Anyways, here's my headcanon. Ingo actually does remember what happened before Legends Arceus. He's just blocking it out so that he doesn't miss his twin brother, friends, or partner Pokemon. He doesn't want to feel these negative emotions, so instead of facing them head on, he tries to pretend they aren't real. I mean, look at his face in game. Is that the face of a man without any burdens? It looks like he's trying to repress something, and is isn't telling anybody so they don't remind him, leading to them saying he has amnesia. That Arse phone comment caught me off guard, and yeah, the amount of times people have tried to correct me in the way I say Arceus is way too many. It was originally Arceus, and then it was changed to Arceus. I don't make the rules, go bother that guy over there. Yeah, the headcan is surprisingly dark, but honestly, it makes a lot of sense. He wouldn't look so stressed out if he truly did forget everything. If I lost my memories and got isekai I'd be happy. You could argue he's just scared, but people could just assume that he's an old man with dementia. You could argue he's just scared, but people could just assume that he's an old man with dementia. Wait a minute. Shorehex says, My headcanon is that Pierre's adopts any Zigzagoon he sees. Salted Butters replies, Oh my god, imagine him with a giant army of Zigzagoons. Shorehex then replies with, 
He is the Zigzagoon King. I approve this 100%. Nobody will be able to stop Pierre's Zigzagoon army. I've always liked Zigzagoon for some reason. It just looks really cute and cool at the same time. Now I want to see Pierre is on a throne with a bunch of Zigzagoon surrounding him. Imagine getting jumped by like 30 of them though. That must be horrifying. Type Glace says, I don't really have many headcanons for other characters other than my favorite, so Ryan and Leon swap hats from time to time. Also, one time Ryan stole Leon's main hat and freaked him out. Ryan doesn't wear socks. Nessa listened to Doja Cat and Tyler the Creator. Ryan introduced her to Tyler. I like the idea of Ryan and Leon swapping hats. It makes them seem more like best buds. But I don't like Ryan not wearing socks. What kind of monster doesn't wear socks? Hey! Put some damn socks on! I can definitely see Nessa listening to Doja Cat, and I think Ryan introducing her to Tyler the Creator is funny. If I had a nickel for every time Tyler the Creator appeared in one of my videos, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it is weird that it happened twice now. Stupid Blue Goblin says, I'm sure that a ton of people have similar headcanons, but here are mine anyways. 1. Legendary and mythical Pokemon are immortal and godlike in status, so they actually choose their trainers and just move on to another chosen partner when they are released or their current partner dies, which is why Pokemon like Arceus and Garantina are catchable in the first place. They choose to be caught. 2. This is almost 100% wishful thinking, but I personally think that each Pokemon game has two timelines. The canon timeline and the player's timeline. And in the player's timeline, the player character in each game is actually just the same person moving from region to region for some reason or another. Which explains why they are always a prodigy regardless of the game, and how the player can have Pokemon from the past generations despite them not being native to the region. 3. N was a Pokemon Mystery Dungeons protagonist or one of the humans sent back from the PMD world in Gates to Infinity, which is why he can speak to Pokemon in understand them so well. I've got a few more headcanons, but I'm tired of typing now. I like the one about mythical and legendary Pokemon being able to choose who they're caught by. You would think the god of Pokemon wouldn't be able to be captured, but if they choose who to go with, it makes a lot more sense. For the second one, I also like to think that the player timeline is just us going to another region to completely decimate anyone who stands in our way. People may not recognize this, but maybe that's just because anyone who stands in our way gets obliterated and thus is not able to tell the tale. I think N being a Pokemon mystery dungeon protagonist would be so cool. We never really get a proper explanation as to why N is able to talk to Pokemon, but if we were to get one, I want this to be the reason. Maybe he was just a Zoroark in Mystery Dungeon. Captain Lancaster says, I had canon that Celine's personality type is ESFP, and you can see her walking around Alola trying to talk to literally every single person she meets, and she would be that person that would death stare or creep a person out if they talk about a dark secret she has. Janine's replies with, that would explain her lifeless smile. I love this one so much. It's so great. She's 100% committed many crimes, and nobody has arrested her because everyone's too scared to confront her about it. Now I wonder who would win in a fight, the drunken Gloria or the death staring Celine. Oh, there she is right now. Shorehex says, another headcanon, but Hop is the kind of person that would send you multiple death threats on multiple alt accounts if he said anything bad about his brother. Hop would 100% send death threats to any Leon haters. He's the ultimate Leon stan. Just wait till he posts someone's IP address and just simply says, he said Leon's cape was dumb. Speaking of Twitter, go follow me. I usually post video updates there and whatever else I feel like posting. Gabriel Hernandez says, a crazy headcanon of mine is that the reason Porygon's Z becomes crazy is because he's the only creature that realizes he's in a video game. That dubious cyst that makes him evolve his code from the game's cartridge, and since Porygon is a computer Pokemon, he becomes self-aware, but realizes he has no power since he isn't a protagonist. That is such a cool concept, and I really like it a lot. It becoming self-aware is really creepy, and if I were Porygon, I'd do the same thing, so I don't really blame him. Maybe the reason it corrupted was because it was doing its best to break out of the game. Man, we really are just side characters in someone else's story. But that doesn't mean we can't have our own spin-off. Nitro Crusher says, I have this headcanon that Pokemon have the same or very similar ambitions to a lot of trainers, as in most of them hear stories of the champions Pokemons as kids and they want to one day be caught by a future champion and go on many great adventures. I also like to think that once they reach a certain level, they start to get a lot of confidence and get picky with trainers, which is one reason why they become harder to catch. Since Pokemon are still like, you know, sentient creatures, I think this is a nice way to look at what they aspire to become. Since Pokemon do like to battle, I think this is the perfect goal for them. Of course, if you were a strong Pokemon, you wouldn't let some wimp catch you you'd put up a good fight to see if they were even worthy of having you. That's exactly what this Alex Matrix did. He put up a good fight and threatened to call the cops on me, but hey, I caught him. Shut up! Indigo says, I like to think that Piers does eventually go on to pass on the Spike Month gym to Marnie so he can better focus on his music career. I also think that while he's still in Spike Month, on occasion he likes to give some treats to all Galarian Zigzagoons and Linoons in the city, and he ends up just eating goldfish or something like that for dinner instead. It's kind of just his way of giving back to the Pokemon in his hometown. This one is really heartwarming. Marnie does eventually 
eventually end up taking over the Spike Month gym, which is good because Pierre didn't really seem that interested in battling anyway. On top of giving all the Zigzagoons little snacks, I think it'd be nice if he did a little performance for them as well. And uh, I really hope by goldfish you mean the snacks and not someone's pet. Swamp says, Okay, so here I have my head cannon. The starters originate from another region in each game or are endangered Pokemon. This is because although they cannot be attained in the wild, many trainers still have them in their teams and are well known. Maybe Legends Arceus makes this a bit canon since Sinnoh starters are around in Hisui but not in modern Sinnoh. Even the starters given by Leventon come from regions that we already know. Even if my head cannon won't appear in the video, I still like your content. It's nice to have you here. First, I just want to say thank you so much. I really do appreciate everyone's support. You guys really are the motivation that makes me want to keep making videos. Anyways, I always wondered why starter Pokemon were so rare. Like, you would think since they're starter Pokemon that they wouldn't be all too rare, right? The majority of people in the Pokemon world recognize them and aren't impressed or confused as to how you got such a rare Pokemon. I like this head cannon though. Them being endangered might explain why the professors have them. Them being endangered would be pretty sad, but if they are, I think Diego de Alvarado would come to save the day once more. He saved all those Lapras long ago. Okay, maybe I should have seen that one coming, but if you'd like to see the true extent of my clairvoyancy, you should watch this video I made about what my predictions were for Scarlet and Violet a week before they released. It's fun to look back on what I thought would have happened, and hey, some of them were pretty spot on. Anyways, if you have any headcanons, leave them down below for a part three. Bye everyone!